Hello again, and welcome back to allprophecyfulfilled.com on the World Wide Web, uh, and on Facebook, and YouTube, simply All Prophecy Fulfilled. Um, okay, we are in the midst of a series that I've titled The ABCs of Bible Prophecy, and I realize up to this point, it probably seems that we've got off to a slow roll, uh, but, but we're going to pick up steam, so, so bear with me. Um, okay, up to this point, I basically made three points, okay? And I, I want to make sure we're, we're clear on these. Number one is that the story of the Bible is an account uh, of redemptive or salvation history. So God related with man and accomplished his plan of redemption through covenants. Thus, the biblical story or narrative needs to be seen through the lens of covenants. Um, thus, covenant eschatology, uh, not historical eschatology. Number two, the death of Adam was uh, alienation or separation from God. Okay, so we went back to the beginning, to the garden, and we saw that in the day uh, he sinned, eating from the tree, he died. Speaking of Adam, uh, not a physical death. Uh, he was cast out of the garden, banished, separated, alienated from the garden of God, the very place that he once had fellowship and walked with God. Okay, so what does this have to do with, with eschatology? What does this have to do with prophecy? Well, it's that very death that had to be restored or overcome, if you will. Okay, number three. Uh, we fast forwarded to the Exodus out of Egypt, and we saw that uh, with the establishment of the Mosaic Covenant, uh, the law, it was the death, the death of Adam, that was placed into or, or under the law or Torah, and it created this inseparable uh, bond or attachment one to the other. Now, why is that important to eschatology or prophecy, you might ask? Well, to put it as simply as I possibly can here, let me think here. Um, the Bible, from beginning uh, of the Old Testament scriptures all the way through the New Testament scriptures, not up to the New Testament, but through the New Testament scriptures, only concerns itself with one end. And that would be at the time when the death of Adam, which had been placed under the law, would be defeated. Does that make sense? So when the final end of the law came, swallowing up death and victory, says Paul, this is the end. Okay, so all of that is uh, foundational information. And I am just itching to uh, start in Genesis and work ourselves through in a couple of video series and demonstrate how the only end, uh, the only last days, the only latter days, the end of days, as defined by the Bible, and it runs through the Old Testament scriptures like a thread all the way through the New Testament, is the old, the end or last days of the old covenant. And that's it, folks. <sighs> but... Before I do that, or before we do that, I want to give you some actual um, ABC foundational uh, interpretive principles, okay, that must guide us as we go forward, okay? So these are actual principles. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to give them to you one at a time. I think we only have time to go over one today. So first, let me ask you a question. And I asked this before, I think. Do we consider the apostles to be our authority? Okay, and I mean, do we consider their insights, their writings uh, to be God's word? And I bet you're saying, yeah, of course I do. Sure. So whatever they say, however they interpret the scriptures in the Old Testament, um, then we will submit to their word. And we're going to consider their interpretation as divinely inspired and authoritative. Right? Good. Glad you said yes. Okay, then. So let's consider... Uh, some statements by the apostles. Today I'll just cover Paul. I want you to consider these, and then we're going to have to consider their implications as we read Scripture going forward. So I'm going to put them up on the screen there for you, and uh, I'm just going to read them straight through, and then I'll comment on them. Acts 22.3. This is Paul speaking. He says, I am a Jew uh, born in uh, Tarsus of uh, uh, Cilicia, uh, brought up before in this city, educated under Gamaliel, strictly according to the law of our fathers, being zealous for God, just as you are today. Acts 23, 6. 
Paul began crying in the council, Brethren, I am a Pharisee, a son of a Pharisee. I am on trial for the hope and resurrection of the dead. Acts 24, 14 and 15. And I confess this to you, that according to the way they call a sect, so I so serve I, the God of the fathers, believing all things that in the law and the prophets have been written, having hope towards God, which they themselves also wait for, that there is about to be a rising again of the dead, both of righteous and unrighteous. Acts 26, 4 through 7. So then all Jews know my manner of life from my youth up, which from the beginning was spent among my own nation and at Jerusalem, since they have known about me for a long time, if they're willing to testify, that I lived as a Pharisee according to the strictest sect of our religion. And now I am standing trial for the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers, the promise to which our 12 tribes hope to attain. Acts 26, 22 through 23. Having therefore obtained the help that is from God, I stand to this day testifying both small and to small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would happen, how the Christ must suffer, and how by resurrection of the dead he would be the first to proclaim light both, both to these people and to the Gentiles. Whew, that was a lot to take in. Now, I don't know about you, but in all those statements, Paul sounds so emphatic. His, his teachings, his theology, his hopes, they were, they were grounded on. They were tethered to nothing. He said nothing but what the Old Testament law and the prophets spoke of. So whatever the prophets taught and whatever they looked forward to towards, so to Paul. His teaching was not new teaching. He wasn't suggesting that there were you know, some other uh, brand new, different promises for the New Testament church and they come into fulfillment uh, sometime later off in the distant future. He, his message wasn't, hey, the Messiah came, he died for your sins, you can be a Christian now. Oh, and by the way, someday, who knows when, he, he's going to come uh, surf in a cloud, he's going to burn up the world, uh, he's going to make a new one, and he'll give us all brand new, perfect physical bodies. Look. If we think that was Paul's concept or the Jewish concept of resurrection and, and, and the coming of the Lord or the day of the Lord, uh, we simply are not understanding the concepts correctly. Why? I think it's because we've neglected Paul's source for his theology. And what was his source? It was the Old Testament scriptures. Okay, so this interpretive principle, if you want to call it that, I, I, I'd like to, um, I'm trying to convey, let's call this the Paul principle. And I know that's kind of cheesy or stupid or simple, but uh, just uh, maybe that'll help us remember the Paul principle. Okay, so if we say that Paul or any other New Testament writer was propagating uh, some other hope other than what was taught and foretold in the Old Testament, some new hope. Uh, then we are missing it, folks. Uh, Paul said exactly the opposite. The Paul principle uh, should remind us, as we continue on here, that his hope, his teaching, his eschatology, it was nothing but what the Old Testament law prophets uh, hoped for and looked for and taught. So when we get around, and I hope we will, and I hope you'll stick with me, when we get around to defining uh, biblically, the last days and the new heavens and the new earth and the day of the Lord or the, the Lord's coming. Boy, and you know, we get into passages like 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15. Um, we better have this principle firmly planted uh, in our minds because let me tell you something all things written in the Law and the Prophets uh, were coming into fulfillment or fruition in Paul's day. Paul knew it, Peter knew it, all the New Testament writers knew it. Uh, and I think this is important and this is foundational. So uh, this may have been new stuff to you. This may not have been new stuff to you, but either way, um, 
we're going to cut it right there. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, next video, we're going to look at uh, a couple things that Peter said. We'll call that the Peter Principle. Uh, but in, in any case, I, I appreciate you joining me. I really do. Uh, I hope you're getting something out of this. Um, we'll see you next time. Uh, <laughs> take care. AllProphecyFulfilled.com. Check us out on uh, YouTube as well and on Facebook. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.